Good morning, and thank you for being with us uh, in the room and also on webcast. My name is Maher Nasser. I'm the director of the outreach division in the UN Department of Public Information, and I'm uh, very uh, honored and happy to have with me uh, Richard Dixon, the president and chief operating officer of Mattel, as well as Tulip Lewis Tamoka from uh, uh, Senior Advisor on Africa for UN Women. So today we are here to uh, launch a collaboration that has been ongoing for the last couple of years. Today is the kickoff of uh, Thomas and Friends on Nick Jr. Uh, this is uh, the result of uh, two years of work, Mattel and Thomas and Friends with the United Nations uh, in the Department of Public Information, but as well we've involved UN Women, UN Environment Program, UNDP, EFAD, uh, and several others, UN Environment Program, and several other UN organizations on incorporating elements from the Sustainable Development Goals agenda into nine of the 26 episodes of the new season of Thomas and Friends. So some might ask what connects the United Nations and a preschool program for children. I would argue that, of course, everything that happens in, the mill, in this building, agreements by member states, resolutions, uh, reports, and declarations matter for every person on the planet. And the most important agreement and road, pa uh, pa road map that has been agreed in this building recently is, of course, the Agenda 2030. 17 Sustainable Development Goals approved by, adopted by world leaders in 2015. And our job in the Department of Public Information is to help and work with member states, but also with civil society, with academic institutions, with the creative community, how to translate the language of the UN into day-to-day -day language that is understood and basically in, acted on by everybody. We have to always turn to partners to help us to reach different audiences. Of course, media and journalists is the first direct, but also working with the creative community and other media is for us a must if we are to reach everywhere and everybody. And why not char start at a very young age? Preschool, children start learning by playing and by stories. And I think this is the beginning of a partnership which I hope will lead to others with Mattel and other industries. We invite uh, everybody out there to come and work with us to find ways of introducing the Sustainable Development Goals agenda, ending poverty, hunger, achieving gender equality, ensuring access to education, health, prosperity, working together to improve life on the planet for people, but also while protecting the planet itself and dealing with climate change, protecting biodiversity and so on and so forth. So now I would like to maybe turn over the floor to Richard to tell us his perspective and, and why is Mattel working with the United Nations on this? And then of course we'll hear from Tolu on, on her role in this and, and, and the role we played, uh, she played in this. And we'll be happy to take questions afterwards. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on behalf of everybody at Mattel, it's, uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here at the United Nations representing, of course, um, our beloved brand, Thomas & Friends, which is just one of uh, the many special brands um, at Mattel. So as you've been hearing today, we're introducing a groundbreaking new collaboration uh, to advance the Sustainable Development Goals. New Thomas content will bring six of the goals to life through storytelling and inspiring and engaging the next generation of global citizens. Now, while this may seem an unlikely collaboration, uh, there are very few brands that can partner with the United Nations on such a powerful message of friendship and teamwork. Thomas and friends can. These type of alliances combines social justice, commerce, and connectivity, which we believe is a powerful new strategy for our brands and, frankly, all brands going forward. As a children's entertainment company, we're well known for a power, por powerful portfolio of brands. And I believe there's a lot Mattel can do to positively impact the next generation as we evolve our brands into more purpose-driven platforms. 
In Thomas and Friends, the United Nations has found a like-minded partner, an influential brand and powerhouse content creator to connect really important global causes to characters children's love and admire. And in the UN, we have found an ideal collaborator, one that is equally passionate about children and the world that they will inherit. It is a wonderful, true new friendship in the Thomas brand and the spirit of what the brand is and a great example of how we at Mattel are growing the value of our brands through a commitment to purpose. Mattel and the UN were actually established in the very same year, each reflecting in its own way the hopes and dreams of that time. And today, we're coming together to inspire the next generation of global citizens. I personally applaud the UN's mission and share its belief in the power of the next generation to change the world in incredibly positive ways. And I'm confident that this influential collaboration will continue for the well-being of future generations together as we inspire the world's youngest creative thinkers to imagine a better world. So thank you so much for the opportunity to present it, and I believe that it is truly the beginning of what will be a long and sustainable uh, partnership going forward. Thank, thank, thank you, Richard. And just to give an idea of what shape that collaboration took, uh, for the last two years, once we started the talks, uh, basically what we did is bring experts from the UN on different topics and put them together with the writers and the creators of the storylines and Tolu was one of the experts who brought in the gender perspective and this is why she's with us and Tolu maybe you can tell us about your own experience. Thank you Maher and thank you to Mattel uh, for providing the United Nations and for you and women the opportunity to work with you on such a new innovative and creative project. It's been two very awesome years working with Mattel and with other agencies of the UN led by DPA. Um, it started off with a, um, a brainstorming session uh, where a few of us were invited as UN agencies working to promote the Sustainable Development Goals to see how we could help uh, Mattel uh, ship the SDGs into uh, a, a body of series and uh, films that would uh, bring the SDGs alive to very young preschoolers. And this is how the partnership evolved um, into us uh, providing uh, guidance, uh, feedback on how the sustainable development goals uh, could uh, be integrated in the film. Uh, very important for me was uh, the gender equality goal, which is goal five, and how we could bring that um, into the learning for preschoolers, uh, but also for their families. Uh, because as we know, there are often so many stereotypes about what boys can do and what girls can do. And uh, it was a great opportunity for us to see how at a very early age, uh, we can help shape new norms, uh, new thinking about equality, about the fact that girls can do just as well as boys can and girls also want to reach their potential and want to contribute to shaping the world and to making the planet a safer and more beautiful place for everyone. And uh, my role in this partnership uh, included helping to shape the designs uh, of the new train engine called Nia, who is from Kenya, and reflecting the Africa vibe uh, into that character, uh, but also moving away from the often negative stereotypes we have about the continent and looking at how we could project uh, the image of an empowered girl engine um, into the series. And I'm very happy uh, with the product that was pre-developed and with the character that Nia presents to, to young kids. Um, I think uh, for me, what I take out of this partnership and this collaboration is that this is just the beginning of so much more than that the UN can do with creative partners uh, like yourselves, like in Hollywood. And we hope that we can help uh, to create uh, a more equal world, uh, a world free of discrimination, a world where universality uh, would exist and where diversity will be represented in very beautiful colors and shapes as Mattel has done. So thank you very much. It's been a great opportunity working with you. Thank you, thank you Tolu. And, and I think this poster shows uh, Nia uh, in, in her outfit from Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> 
So in, in addition to basically elements of five SDGs in the nine episodes, uh, I think there's also short content, video content that helps parents and caregivers teach these issues to children. And, and there's a website all aboard for global goals, which has more and more of those details. So we invite you to visit those as well. So maybe now we can take uh, questions. Pam. Thank you, Maher, and thank you, Tolo, and welcome. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Um, I, it's all very interesting. I wanted to ask uh, Richard Dixon, um, what other plans does Mattel have um, for the SDGs to inspire in other projects that you do um, for children? In other words, this is one collaboration. Are you using these global goals? And to, if that's all right, and then to Tolu, um, in terms of gender equality, my understanding from reading your materials is that it's now three boy characters, engines, and three girl characters, and Thomas. Um, what, how does that send the message to kids um, that uh, girl engines can do the same as boy engines? Thank you. Sure, so I'll, I'll take uh, the first part. Um, at Mattel, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to be 75 years old in, in 2020. Uh, many of our brands have a rich heritage uh, unlocking the imaginations of kids to inspire them to believe and imagine that they could be anything they want to be. Um, we have worked hard recently on many of our core brands, Fisher Price, Barbie, American Girl, to re-engineer these brands that have legacy to be more relevant in today's uh, kids' mindset and also to create purposeful play values for moms and dads to believe in these brands and the proposition that these brands represent. We believe this partnership is a great example of one aspect with one of our brands infusing the right type of curriculum to create the next generation of creative thinkers and ultimately the next generation that we all need to provide the right curriculum for, stimulate their imaginations to believe that anything is possible, but ultimately infuse the values and benefits that certainly the sustainable goals represent um, that we believe is, is the right type of content for our brands. As we move forward, both with our partnership and other partnerships that represent purposeful play messaging, uh, you'll hear a lot more about Mattel's portfolio and the advancements that we're making around the value of play and how we can complement many of the sustainable goals appropriately by brand. The other piece, which of course I'll, I'll, uh, I'll turn the floor over, but I think it's a really exciting and uh, important portrayal of equality uh, in the Thomas portfolio as you'll see through the content the equality and the balance uh, of both boys and girl characters coming together to achieve missions and engage in great storytelling that promotes and presents um, great girl empowerment and equality amongst the characters. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pam. Um, so as you rightly noted, uh, gender equality is really uh, front and center to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. And we're very happy that in the representation, in terms of the numbers of the train engines, there's uh, almost an equal um, representation of boy engines and, and girl engines. So that's really um, having Mattel looking at the issues of representation very clearly. Uh, so that's definitely a good step in the right direction. And there's possibilities to do even more with future episodes as well, because the Sustainable Development Goals is about representation. And we see this in the world out there, but you know, the role women play in politics and in decision-making um, levels and the fact that the numbers are just not as good as they are in the Thomas uh, news series. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we hope that, you know, by 2030, indeed, we could have the 50-50 uh, representation that is desired um, across the world. Um, another important element is um, on gender equality is the empowerment and the fact that oftentimes, you know, in, in commercial productions, uh, uh, women or girls are often seen as uh, 
uh, in less of an equal footing in terms of the role, in terms of equality, in terms of the pay, um, pay um, remunerations for, for work done just like men. So this is an opportunity for us to also show what an empowered character looks like. And this is what Nia presents. Um, she's an empowered engine. Uh, she gets the job done. Uh, she's focused. Uh, she doesn't get distracted. <laughs> so these are very um, important elements that we want young girls to see. I've got young daughters myself, and so I hope that they're inspired uh, by the work that I've done. And I must say, they also had a sneak peek <laughs> into the work when I was uh, putting it together. And so their views are also reflected. And, and this is our aspiration, really, that by 2030, we have global citizens, we have boys and girls who are courageous, who are brave, and who are ready to bring the SDGs alive. They're ready to implement it and make the planet a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Tolo. And I think there's one element every parent knows is, of course, that children always get attached to a special series as they grow up in that age. And, and Thomas has many, many children consider it as their, their preferred series. And it was always in one place and always boy engines in, in majority for it. But now there's more diversity. They've, they've also opened up his, I mean, when we think in the world today, people who are encountering people of other nationalities speaking different languages have a much more open mind and more of a global uh, perspective. And I think that's an important element that mm -hmm. even though it doesn't strike as obvious, but it does have uh, an impact on how when they grow up, they, they appreciate difference and they see it as richness rather than, than, than danger. I'll just add one more thing. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're an owner of brands that have decades of storytelling and legacy, uh, sometimes it's very hard to shift uh, and change because the perception is essentially that, you know, what worked then should work now. And uh, m many of the cases within Mattel brands as a portfolio um, are legacy brands. And so, again, you know, so Thomas never left the island of Sodar, uh, for those of you that know it. And so the fact that now Thomas is actually exploring the world mm -hmm. with global friends and learning about the world in various different ways is a really important milestone uh, from a brand perspective and really is a reflection of cultural relevance and the legacy, essentially, that we feel responsible for to create the right type of storytelling and infuse those values. And so this partnership and certainly the passion uh, brought to it and infused in the characters, Nia especially, is going to be, I think, an exciting start to the next chapter of, of Thomas. Thank you, Pam. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much thank and uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Tolu, thank, thank you, Richard. You. Thank, thank you. Thanks.